overflows. Sentiments are like rose flowers. There are three layers of human individuals. His physiology, the body, his psychology, the mind, and his being, the eternal self. These are the three layers. One is frozen, the other is fluid-like, and third is the state of vapors. These are the stages of liquid, the fluid. Love can exist on all three planes, just as water can exist in frozen form, in fluid form, and in vapors form. As a frozen ice, fluid flowing, and vapors. Love can exist on all three planes, but its quality will be different. On the plane of physiology, the body, it is simply sexuality. It is not love. You can call it love because the word love seems to be more poetic and beautiful. But 99% of the people are calling their sex as love. Sex is biological, physiological, your chemistry, your hormones, everything material is involved in it. This is the first layer or the level at which you can exist. The only 99% of the people live at this level and they call sex as love. Only 1% of people knows a little bit deeper. These are poets, painters, musicians, dancers, singers. They have a sensitivity that can that they can feel beyond the body. They can feel the beauties of the mind and the sensations of the heart. Because they live on that plane themselves. But a musician, a painter, a poet lives on a different plane. He does not think. Instead he feels. And because he lives in his heart, he can feel the other person's emotions, sentiments and hearts. That is ordinarily called love. It is rare. I am saying only one percent of the people. Once in a while you will find someone who is living by heart and is bound to be a musician, a painter, a poet, a singer. It is rare. I am saying only one person, perhaps once in a while. At times one can get the glimpses of this when one moves from thinking to feeling. Sometimes when you are singing a song, you move from thinking to feeling, but that is not always. You live in at the plane of thinking, but because you are singing, you are in music at that moment, you move from thinking to feeling. Why are many people not moving to the second plane? Because it is tremendously beautiful, but there is a problem. Anything which is beautiful is also very delicate. Sentiments, emotions, feelings are very delicate. It is not like the hardware. It is made of very fragile glass 
and once a mirror has fallen and broken, then there is no way to put it together. You are in a love relationship, so you are operating as a hardware. At times, emotions arise, sentiments are there, but once the, delic the delicate sentiments or feelings are destroyed, it is very difficult to put them together. As a result, people are afraid to get so much involved that they reach to the delicate layer of love. And when it happens with someone, you reach to the core of that plane. The life moves in a totally different manner. If you happen to have reached that state of delicacy, the emotions, the sentiments, the feeling, the relationship blossoms into a totally different manner. It helps you to grow, it helps you to evolve, and that is very important. Because at that stage, love is tremendously beautiful, but also tremendously changing. Remember, sentiments and feelings, they are not stones, they are like rose flowers. So they are delicate and it is very important you have to understand their delicacy and how to deal with the sentiments and feelings of others. Poets are known, artists are known to fall in love almost every day. Their love is like a rose flower. While it is there, there is fragrance so alive, dancing in the wind, in the rain, in the sun, asserting its beauty each moment. But by the evening, it may be gone, and you cannot do anything to prevent it. The deeper love of the heart is just like a breeze that comes into the room and with it brings its freshness, coolness and fragrance and then after touching it, vibrating your inner cord, it is gone. You cannot catch hold of the wind in your fist. The very few people are so courageous as to live, when, live with a moment to moment changing life. Hence, they have decided to fall into a love on which they can depend. I do not know which kind of love you know. Most probably the first kind, perhaps the second kind, and you are afraid that if you reach your being, what will happen to your love? You have no courage. Someone has to take you into that courage so that you can move through the various stages. And when you reach to the innermost core, the nature of love changes. You do not know what will happen to your love. This is natural. Certainly it will be gone, but you will not be looser then. A new kind of love will arise, which arises only perhaps to one in thousands, in millions. That love can only be called lovingness. So when you move from the physiology to psychology to sentiments, you understand these, you are not afraid this moment it is there. If it will be there next moment or not, then you can reach. You can desire everything in the world, but you cannot desire enlightenment. You cannot desire love because everything else is there outside you. However, both love 
and enlightenment is your inner center of being. It is just like you are looking outward, so your own being is not in your consciousness. You have forgotten your inner self, you are looking outward. The whole art of meditation is to just turn your consciousness inward so that you can become acquainted with yourself, the inner self. You are not yet introduced to yourself. My effort is to introduce you to yourself. You know what your name is, but you did not come with that name. That name was imposed on you from outside. That label has been put by others. You know you are Christian. You are a Christian, a Hindu, a Jew, a Muslim. But you were not born as a Hindu, a Muslim or a Christian. You were born as deep and tremendous luminosity, innocence. You were born enlightened. But before you could become aware of this, people started putting all kinds of garbage into you and around you. Before you could have a look inside, they turned your eyes outward and focused them on other things. You have to become the greatest scientist in the world. You have to become the richest man in the world. They manage one thing. They look your attention from, they took your attention from inward to outward, from becoming, from being to becoming. Becoming is going to be away from the being. The more you attain your desires, the farther you are moving from yourself. And there is no end to becoming. Always there is a horizon you horizon that is calling you forth. Becoming is unending. So people go on running after shadows of their own life. And where do they end up? In a graveyard, a president, and all. That is all that is there. The ultimate attainment of all their efforts is grief. In the East, it has been a beautiful tradition that whenever anybody dies, he is burned. The grave is not made. He is not put in a grave, put on a funeral pyre. It signifies the man burnt his whole, the man, this man burnt his whole life. This is the ultimate result. Becoming is like burning. Funeral pyre is the goal that he has achieved because of his constant running towards becoming. All his life burning for this thing, burning for that thing, that is how the life continues. My effort is to give you the taste of your, taking you from your physiology to psychology to your sentiments, to your emotions, to feeling, so that you can move within. And one day you experience your beingness, lovingness, enough for now.